Okay, so in order to be able to talk about the neural basis of language, we need to know both what language is and what the brain is. So let's start with language. What is language? Um, if you ask the internet to this question, you'll probably get an answer that's something like, language is a system of communication. Like, I bet that's what the Wikipedia page for language says, something like that. But what I want to ask here is, what is it about language that allows it to be, for example, allows it to be used as a system of communication? That sort of says something about the function of language as opposed to really what the uh, essential nature of the system is. So what language does is it connects form to meaning. And what I mean by this is that language is a system that in some sense allows you to get your thoughts out of your head. It also allows you to formulate thoughts in a perhaps clearer way. It's a way to think also, but it allows you to externalize your thoughts. And of course, for the comprehender, it allows you to receive a message from another person. So the way we think about it is that language really is this connection between form and meaning. So let's imagine that the meaning that you want to convey is just the simple concept of cat. So you're thinking about a cat, maybe you're seeing a cat, you want to say cat. Okay, starting very simple. What language allows you to do is to, for example, externalize that. So you're going to map this meaning onto the phonological or phonetic form of the token of speech cat. So that would be one externalization. So you're establishing that connection between the concept of cat and the sound sequence of cat. And language links those two uh, together. What's really important to always remember is that speech is not the only externalization of language. Another externalization of language is, of course, writing. So there's a relationship between the written form and the uh, uh, phonological form that's quite transparent here. Uh, but this is another way to externalize language. And then there are others. So for example, instead of speech, we could be using sign language. Instead of this kind of writing, we could be using Braille and so forth. So that's why we say language connects form to meaning as opposed to saying language connects speech to meaning. So language and speech are different, uh, two different things. Speech is just one way to externalize language. So fundamentally, language is this connection between form and meaning. And there are different types of forms that can uh, externalize language. And of course, in language comprehension, what we're doing is we're going from the form to the meaning. So you're getting one of these uh, kinds of stimulations to a sensory organ. Maybe you're seeing the visual form cat, or you're hearing the, um, the auditory sequence cat, uh, or you're seeing the sign, and all of those allow you to go to the meaning, which is the conceptual representation of a cat. Uh, and in language production, when we're talking, we have some message in our mind, um, and we then map that on to some type of form representation. Okay, so let's then think about a slightly more complicated example. So I have a simple sentence here. Mushrooms are an edible fungus. Let's think about that example sentence. Here is a way to represent the auditory signal that your brain would be getting if you're hearing this sentence. And this representation is what we call a spectrogram. It's a representation of sound amplitude across different frequencies of time, different frequencies over time. So here we have time, here we have sound frequency, and the darker the plot, 
the more power there is at that frequency. So this is just the raw auditory signal. That's what your brain gets. It doesn't get anything more than this. Uh, so this is just uh, air moving. And so somehow from this raw signal, we extract a rather complicated meaning. So in this particular case, this continuous speech signal completely automatically, very effortlessly in your brain gets mapped onto a meaning that something like, in general, if something is a mushroom, then that thing is ed edible and the thing is a fungus. Okay. So it's kind of miraculous that your brain manages to do this uh, so effortless. So what are the various steps that your brain must do in order to get from this raw continuous speech signal to this type of complex propositional representation? Well, one of the first things that your brain needs to do is to take the sound, the sort of raw acoustic sound representations and map them onto categories of sounds. So for example, the very first sound here, you need to understand that that is an instance of the M sound in your language. And those sound categories are different in different languages, but you as the native speaker of that language understand and you have tacit knowledge about what your language's categories are. And you're able to take this very variable input and map the um, sounds into these uh, more discrete categories. So as the output of this, you will then get uh, a sequence of sounds. Okay, and now the sequence of sounds are the important sound categories in your language. And we'll talk a lot more about uh, what we mean by uh, that type of categorization, and obviously how our brains do that. So now the sounds themselves don't have meaning, like the sound M does not map onto uh, anything like a concept in your brain or anything like that. Um, so we need to put the sounds together into larger units that then connect with meaning uh, in our brains. And the smallest uh, units that uh, bear meaning in language is what we call morphine. So that's a technical term that you're going to learn in the course of this uh, class if you're not already familiar with. So here I've given you a kind of breakdown uh, uh, into morphemes. Uh, of this sequence a little bit simplified. And furthermore, we're going to be forming something like words out of those morphemes. The concept of a word is actually theoretically kind of tricky, which is why I have it in scare quotes here, but I think it's an okay um, um, notion for us to work with here. And then language is also not just a, a, a string of words. We put those words together into structured representations and the structure matters a lot for how we interpret the sentence. So that is the syntactic representation of the sentence. Uh, so the words are combined into well, phrases and then further into larger expressions, sentences. And off of that syntactic structure, we're then able to create uh, a sentence level interpretation for that expression. And so that's what I have here in the, uh, in the thought bubble. Uh, and that combinatory semantic representation, we can also express in a formal way. I'm not going to get into those, those details here. But so these are the sort of main levels of representation that your brain has to tackle with in order to go from the continuous speech signal to a meaning like the one that we're talking about here. And the miracle of language processing is how effortlessly we work through all these different levels of representation um, without even noticing. So that's the, the combinatory semantic level. So all these different levels of representation 
correspond to different subfields of linguistics that study these levels. So when we're interested in that continuous speech signal, we're doing phonetics. When we're talking about sounds at this kind of categorical level, we're talking about phonologies, so it's a study of sound systems of languages. Uh, when we're studying the uh, internal structure of words, uh, that's morphology. Um, when we're talking about or studying the structure of sentences and the structure of uh, uh, linguistic expressions at the sentence level, that's syntax. And then when we're understanding how the compositional semantic interpretation comes about, that is uh, what we study in you know, what's called formal semantics. And so now what we're going to do in this course is walk through all these different levels. It's kind of a soup to nuts approach. We'll be talking about the neuroscience of phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, and semantics, uh, moving uh, uh, sort of bottom up. So from sound to meaning uh, and including also reading, which is important. So what is language? Language is a system with multiple levels of representation that allows us to connect meaning to form. That's what we're doing uh, when we're producing language. And then in the other direction, form to meaning when we're comprehending language. Next up, we'll talk about what the brain is. See you then.